Hello, folks. Uh, happy to see you. This is one of the small angles of this big, huge conference center. So it was really hard for coming. And uh, today, I would like to talk about deploying cloud applications, uh, how to run a Tosca. Host speaker, Gershison. Uh, she will join me a little bit later. Um, today we are going to cover a short overview of those languages. Uh, compare them by several uh, criteria. And Michal will talk about CloudBand's cloud journey in selecting languages for the platform, the application how the platform support cloud applications like and NFE use cases. And we will have time for talking uh, for questions and we'll try to answer them. So once again, our objective for today is give you enough knowledge and help to help you make an informed decision to which, which language and which tool to use for your next apl cloud application. Regardless, you're going to use it for NFE use cases or with some uh, IT as a service or just regular WordPress. So let's go quickly through these languages. But before that, I would like to clarify what is DSL. Most of these three languages, Hot, Morana, PL, and Tosca, uh, explain it as DSL. So DSL is a domain specific language, um, which is specific, of applied specifically in some specific use case. And in our case, use case is deploying and managing application on top of the cloud. So three languages, Hot, Morana PL, and Tosca. We selected these three languages because they are available natively in OpenStack. And here, when we are talking about these languages, we're also talking uh, about the implementations in OpenStack. For Hot is obviously Heat. For Morana PL is Morana. And Tosca, slightly different, Tosca has a project which is called Heat Translator, which is responsible for translating uh, Tosca definition to the Heat template and deploy it through Heat. So basically, uh, you take your Tosca template and deploying it using Heat. So you can use only compatibilities available in Tosca, which are also available in Heat. But regardless of that, uh, we also will talk about language. Most oldest language in, from these three is Tosca. It started, the development of Tosca started five years ago. And initially, it was XML-based language for defining, uh, well, defining application definitions. Laterly, around two years ago, two years and once ago, first public draft of uh, Tosca simple profile in YAML was published, which is available by the link you can see on the slide. So all the ideas of Tosca was started developing five years ago, but implemented in YAML as what we see in Heat Translator two years ago. Murana PL was started also two, year, uh, two years ago, one year and 11 months. And Heat is three years ago, and first public release was Gawanna with hot templates. Uh, probably also interesting point is how huge is the community around these languages. Given that uh, Hot and Murana PL are available only on OpenStack, given that the implementations are also only available on OpenStack for now, is 130 developers in Mitaka for Heat templates and Hot. 93 development developers in Metaka from Rana PL. For Tosca, we count slightly differently. Uh, this is open standard, uh, not yet published. It's still in draft. Uh, I'm talking specifically about Tosca simple profile in YAML. Original Tosca, which is uh, XML based, already in Oasis standard. So this uh, language is developed in Oasis, and it's community where any company can join and join this working group working on this language. So they have 135 members who are working on developing and extending this language. I truly believe that one of the important things about language is 
which is, uh, is it imperative or declarative? So this field language, uh, two of them are declarative. Heat templates and Tosca are declarative languages. So essentially you declaratively describe what you want to achieve as a result of execution of this definition. And Murana PL is imperative. So you specifically say what Murana engine needs to do in order to give you a needed result. All three of them are based on the YAML. Though uh, HOT and Tosca can be natively translated, like can be parsed as YAML per se, uh, Murana is slightly different. We use some extensions of YAML language, so we have constructions which are not really uh, maybe parsed with like this bare uh, YAML parser. But still, it's YAML based and completely confirms YAML standard. So these are our extensions, uh, which are allowed by the standard. More appeal can be parsed as YAML. Each of these three languages uh, have following, like I described it, described it as resource-oriented or object-oriented. Uh, I will explain a little bit later uh, in more details what do I mean by that. But specifically for heat, resource-oriented means that most of the constructs, uh, constructs in your language are res uh, a resource. And in specifically for heat, it's your cloud resource, your VM, your network, your port, which you attach this VM to this network, or any other cloud resource. In MonoPL and Tosca, they are both of them are object-oriented, slight, but slightly in different ways, obviously. But still, uh, object-oriented, it means that in case of Murana PL, you are operated by objects, and object can be anything. You can have an object of your application, which defines different scale-up, scale-down methods of your application, deploy, remove, or anything. Or it can be a class which provides you a VM, or it can be class which provides some specific functionality or set of utilities, anything is object-oriented language. In Tosca, it's also object-oriented by slightly in different ways. In Tosca, you can define uh, interface and have implementation for this interface, and uh, you can hide un behind this resource quite anything. And it can be also another application, it can be some resource, it can be some something but not, uh, not specifically cloud resource. So this is like several uh, metrics which I think is important to know about language even like before everything, before going through the details of which. Uh, Hot was inspired by Amazon Cloud Formation, so Heat as a OpenSec itself started as a clone of AWS and for a long time, about a year, I believe, uh, he'd only supported CloudFormation templates, which are literally were compatible and one-on-one -on -one matching to AWS CloudFormation language. But slowly, slowly, to reuse capabilities which are provided by OpenStack, getting more and more different from AWS, he needed something to accommodate it. And they had two ways, extend CloudFormation and make it not compatible with AWS CloudFormation templates, or make something else on top of that, like other language, which will accommodate all these capabilities immersed in OpenStack. So in 2013, uh, first heat uh, hot-based templates uh, began, uh, was available with Havana release. In OpenStack, heat is, uh, in this three language, in this three languages, and given uh, that we have implementation in in a heat translator for Tosca, holds largest contributors community, and it means that most probably you'll be more quickly addressed if you have a question about language or you have a bug in this language using heat than Morana PL or Tosca. Um, as a former uh, PDL for Morana, it's sad to say, but it's true. And one really thing which HEAT is really good, and this is why we use HEAT in Murana uh, to do resource allocation, is explicitly declaring resource topology which you need to stand up. 
your VMs, your networks, your drives, uh, everything which you need to spin up and make sure that each one of these resources will be uh, allocated. And especially this new convergence feature which he team is delivering uh, with Mitaka as a first phase and probably Newton as a second phase, giving even further in making sure that what you requested will be truly allocated for you and delivered. Not maybe exactly like in this second, but eventually your, store, your state which you requested, yeah, state of the, this stack will be converged to stacks that you requested, even if it diverts at some point of time. A uh, few things uh, about Murana PL. So Murana PL is imperative object-oriented language. Everything is an object, everything. And imperative obviously means workflows. So in Murana, you natively have a workflow and you can specifically say, please go here, bring up this cluster, configure this endpoint on this node, and go to this node, do this thing, and pass to this node before this node will complete the deployment. Um, Murana PL syntax uh, is appealing for Java and Python developers uh, because it's really close to any simple object-oriented uh, programming language. Java, Python, C Sharp, you name it. And we intentionally did that because one of the really important things for any language, regardless is it DSL or not, is it programming general programming language or whatever, is how easy is it to pick up it? How easy to start developing it? Is it intuitively understandable how to write a for cycle or if in this language? And one of the things which I uh, would like to attribute to Murana PL as advantage and highlight, more than highlight, is ease of composition and ability to heavily reuse different components. Given that you're writing as in traditional languages, uh, different classes and interfaces and can do inherent and uh, also object-oriented stuff, it gives you a truly remarkable way to abstract your pieces of your code, your stuff that you implemented in different classes and upload them to the catalog, which is also one of the things uh, which stands uh, Morana and Morana PL from other two, is built-in catalog capabilities. So we basically have a place in the cloud where you can publish your applications, your libraries, your tools which you developed, your small pieces which can be used by any member of your team. And talking about Morana PL, I can't stop talking uh, not to mention YAKL, yet another query language. This is embeddable and extendable query language which is used by Murana, Mistral, Fuel, and hopefully HEAT at some point of time. Uh, in HEAT, uh, there's an initiative to replace the intrinsic functions which used in HEAT to extract some value from different uh, resources by, query, uh, by YAKL. Uh, you can see a few examples of how YAKL works and how it looks like this query. Uh, this is REPL, so you can run, uh, do pip install YAKL, run YAKL, load some JSON file, and do queries on it. Um, YAKL doesn't work on JSON, it works on any arbitrary object structure, uh, Python object structure, and it's important because uh, comparing to like JSON can, can have circle the, uh, circle, circles in the graph and so on and so forth, YAKL can handle that a lot. Uh, but we are not talking about YAKL specifically today. Uh, Tosca, uh, which is really good about Tosca, it's open standard. And at some point it will be accepted as an open public standard. And it's already in industry standard in NFE, kind of given how young is NFE uh, overall. Uh, Tosca have a uh, lots of implementation. We have one in OpenStack, so means of heat translator. We have Cloudify, uh, which is also open source uh, project, meaning to implement uh, Tosca. And Cloudify now trying to adapt the engine to be publicly available to anyone to develop their own orchestrator on top of this language. And they call this project, I believe, Area. And they're going with Apache Foundation, just in case you're curious, uh, curious guys. So, and most, most uh, famous companies like 
uh, Nokia with a cloud band product, obviously, and others. Yeah, I know that HP kind of have that, uh, have their own implementations, which is good. And I believe that Tosca is best suited for development of applications which one side are close to infrastructure, but at the same time they also abstracted from it. And I will explain it a little bit later more. So I would like to compare this language in three criteria. First of all, learning curve. curve. So HOT has a good documentation, really good. Honestly, I admire it because uh, we use it almost every day when we develop more applications in order to stand up different resource allocation strategy. Uh, was designed after AWS cloud formation, meaning if you have some DevOps experience with AWS, you probably know how to develop using heat. At least you can quickly adapt. More IPL, moderate, set to uh, admit it, but true. Docs are scarce. Uh, we will be working on that. I hope we will have complete reference for the language and core library at some point of time. It's really hard. Um, but the good side of it, uh, it looks like Java and Python. So if you don't really scary uh, to get your hands dirty and you know how to program, you'll have no troubles. Tosca, I would also say moderate because essentially you have a specification which tells about language. But problem with this specification is different implementations. And different implementations truly can be different. So basically, most of the time, you can't run same Tosca template on two different engines. They will not run. And this brings the, the fact that if you want to develop something, you need to learn. And remember, that if you're developing for this engine, you have this, this, and this, and don't have this. That's why moderate. Uh, on the good side, it's really close to how hot looks like, so also pretty easily to adapt. Second criteria is how to, how easy is to create reusable components in the language X. I would say how it is moderate because applications can be defined as superpositions of the other, uh, other resources and templates. So essentially if you want to abstract some part of your template, basically several resources together, you create another template and can refer, re reference one from another by uh, URL and by and provide input parameters. Good side that even most complex uh, imaginable topology of resources can be stand up like this, super easy. And all logic behind each resource is written on Python, so essentially if you want to extend uh, capabilities available in Hot, you need to write on the Python your resource implementations. And at the same time, most of the heat resource uh, Hot templates are written for specific, oh, sorry, are written for specific clouds, meaning that uh, you use internal stuff, internal knowledge about your cloud inside your template. Uh, Warn IPL is, as I already mentioned, quite easy to implement reusable components because you have object-oriented design for your pieces and you can upload them in, term, in a way of library to the catalog, like literal, literally library, like dynamic DLLs and so files, but not obviously DLLs. <laughs> and you have built-in catalogs so you can share them publicly with anyone in community or inside your cloud. Tosca is close to heat, uh, but at the same time uh, slightly different. So in Tosca you have interfaces, so you can abstract uh, different pieces behind the interface and have completely different implementations. Then sort of that each implementation is most probably something written on Python, Shell, or something. Rarely, it's at the same time Tosca. So in Murana PL, all business logic is Tosca. Uh, sorry, is Murana PL. In Tosca, business logic and resources are some other language, probably Python, if you're talking about Python, implement, Python backed implementations of Tosca. Good side, you have a way to create reusable components. Caesar, it's archive of your application. A uh, few more bits, uh, infrastructure abstraction. How application developers abstracted from infrastructure? How deeply I need to know 
on which cloud you're going to run my application, what this cloud have, which, which projects and which capabilities. So in Hot it's limited. You need to know which resources you have in this cloud or you end up like, you saw a huge list of different uh, parameters which you need to pass. Idea of the network, idea of this, idea of that, or whatever. In Murana PL is limited because of one huge thing, uh, huge mistake which we did. We didn't pay so much attention in developing this core library, in developing these abstractions. We have them, you can write them, but we don't have built in many of them. We have networks, we have VMs, but not so much. Other stuff you can do directly going to hit. And in Tosca is easy because you have interfaces, you can make implementation of like interface of this, interface of that, interface of those, and don't think about underlying cloud implementation. Downside, hard to use in dif different, uh, different engines. But if you're talking about same engine but different cloud, it works well. Uh, on this note, I would like to pass uh, this presentation to Michal. She will explain and talk about how CloudBand was using Heat and using uh, Tosca in the product. Hello, everyone. So I would like to share our journey with you. First of all, what is CloudBand? CloudBand is a portfolio of NFV solutions. The three main ones that we have is CloudBand Infrastructure Software, CloudBand Application Manager, and CloudBand Network Director. A little bit louder. Uh, I don't know if it's possible. Can I move the mic up? Go ahead, okay. Oh. <laughs> Is this okay? Yeah, you hear me? Good. <laughs> oh, a lot of people. Okay, uh, so the last two that I mentioned are the ones that are relevant for choosing uh, technology to develop and deploy your cloud applications. So, I want to talk to you about the journey that we've made from 2012 that was mostly a proprietary solution to a community-based solutions that we have today. So, as you see here in the headline, you see VNFM, a Virtual Network Function Manager. This is the way that we deploy our applications. So. What we have in 2012 is a VNFM that was a proprietary solution that we made with our partners, an old partner, a past life of Cloudify Gigaspaces. Together we had a full, comprehensive, complete solution that enabled us to deploy, scale, heal, monitor, and upgrade applications. This is how it worked. They parsed DSL. It was a Groovy-based DSL, and requested the resources and then installed them. Our job was to take care of all the customers' policies and making sure the application was placed optimally in the pl best possible distribution they can do. So why did we need to evolve if we had a working solution? Well, at the time, the customers started wanting open openness and talking about it. Vendor locking was something that everyone wanted to avoid. And our partners realized this as well. They declared that the product has reached end of life and started working on a new product, completely different, so also a managing application, but uh, different and uh, with the same name. So we found ourselves at 2013 with a decision to make. What DSL should we go with in order to develop and deploy cloud applications? So our design drivers were these. First of all, after our, our experience with a proprietary language, we wanted standard DSL now. This was obvious for us. Secondly, we wanted our VNF manager to be generic. We didn't want to limit ourselves to a specific set of application or even to a specific application in a specific company. We wanted everyone to be able to work with our solution. Next thing, we wanted to support multi-cloud from a very similar reason for why we wanted the generic VNFM. We didn't want to limit ourselves to a specific cloud or a specific cloud vendor. And lastly, being a part of the telco world, we wanted our product to be at a high level of serviceability. The two main options that were on the table at the time were either Tosca DSL with our own engine implemented inside CloudBand, 
or hot using the heat engine that's written in the community. We went with the Tosca option. First of all, was heat was in the very early stages then, and was a little immature actually. So we preferred to rely on an engine written at home that we know will work and we can use it. Uh, another reason is that, that we looked at the design drivers and we saw, okay, so we wanted multi-cloud, multi-cloud vendor. And HOT was focused on OpenStack, so we didn't really fit our needs. It didn't fill this design driver. Uh, another thing is that Tosca had been developed inside the Oasis, and all the right companies were there. So it really looked like it's going to be a standard, and that is why we chose it. So what we did is we implemented our own Java-based Tosca engine inside CloudBand. We relied on the latest working draft that was published at the time, and all our objectives were met. But we still needed to keep evolving. Why is that? In the time that it took us to develop Tosca, a lot of things changed in heat. More and more people joined, more and more company joined, and features were added all the time, making HOT very popular amongst different VNFs and VNF, VNFs vendor. A lot of VNFs were implemented in HOT. And customers came to us and asked for features that were already available in HOT. This led to a situation that we were kind of always one step behind with our Tosca implementation. Because at the time it took us to add a feature implemented in HOT, it wasn't available for customers to use. And new features were added in the meantime and requested later. Also, we leave that aside, some of the requirements that came by for features didn't really fit Tosca. Tosca is a solution that is built that you can create an application that can move from cloud to cloud, meaning you can't really have features that are specific to only one cloud, because then your application can be deployed another one. And some of the features requests were relevant only for OpenStack. So it really didn't fit. So these are the reasons. So, we had to make uh, another decision. Or it wasn't really a decision because it's pretty clear that we needed to add hot support in our, our product. We still wanted a generic VNFM like before and of course still co grade serviceability. But this time we understood that OpenStack is very popular and it's go only going to be more popular, which was right. As you know, each summit there are more and more people here. So we focused on OpenStack and we wanted to expose all of the Veeam, all of the OpenStack, if we're talking about OpenStack, all of the OpenStack capabilities that are specific for OpenStack. So our decision was that we needed to adapt to our customer needs. And also, we didn't want to go in that direction and lose, ignore HOT and lose all of the VNFs that are already implemented. We didn't want to make it hard for people uh, to use our product. So what we did is we started promoting and recommended our customers to use the hot DSL and the heat engine. And also we exposed it in our product and leveraged heat. The main thing was that you could use our product to access as an access point, bring your own hot templates, and from our interface, you can choose what OpenStack version you would like. So we still had the possibility to support multiple OpenStack distributions. So you can have a Red Hat distribution, or our own distribution that is based on Red Hat, or any other, maybe even vanilla OpenStack. So you can plug it into our system, bring your hot templates, choose which OpenStack node you would like, and deploy it there. And what else is written in my notes? Um, ah, we as we changed our focus a little bit and included it to allow VNFs to be deployed in OpenStack. Uh, some of you might know that VNFs were built very closely to the hardware, and sometimes they needed very specific things, and sometimes they weren't available on OpenStack yet. So because we decided to focus it on OpenStack, then 
we filled all the gaps that we can find in all of the VNFs that were deployed on CloudBand or wanted to partner up with CloudBand, even VNFs that weren't developed in-house. Then we filled all the gaps that needed to be filled in OpenStack. So definitely our recommendation when it comes to VNFs is hot. Sorry. Uh, so all of this is relevant uh, also to Alcatel Lucent before the merger with Nokia. And I want to talk about another product as well. So all this journey was we talked about the uh, VNF manager. VNF manager is responsible for deploying a single VNF. There is another product that we are working on in CloudBand Network Director, which is an NFVO. Uh, Network Function Virtualization Orchestrator. It allows you to take multiple VNFs and connect them together. And it too needs a DSL. So we needed to make a decision for that one as well. So this is the NFVO. We wanted a generic NFVO from the same reason that we wanted a generic VNFM for the VNFM product. And this time we wanted a standard DSL. And we wanted multi-cloud and multi-cloud vendor, and we wanted a telecom grade serviceability as before. So this time around, very different from the, the decision we made before for our combination of HOT, we chose Tosca. HIT and HOT are only for open stack, and Tosca is a solution that can be a, a very universal compared to it. And the problems that we had with it originally, that VNF vendors wanted uh, specific capabilities from OpenStack, isn't relevant here. NFVO is a layer above it. You use the VNFM in the NFVO. When you want to deploy your VNF, you, the v NFVO sends a request to the manager. And the manager is responsible for all of the headache of talking to a specific cloud. This is a higher level version. So if you remember when we said before that Tosca was too high level, here it's an advantage because it's high level in the right amount. So for NFVO that deploys network service, our recommendation is definitely Tosca. And um, I think it's time for questions. Serge, please join me. Thank you, folks. Questions? Yeah. Uh, we have mics uh, in ISO, if you don't mind. Otherwise, you will not be catched on recording. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, I have one question. Um, um, it's, it's not clear for me uh, why we should have a YAML-based advantage uh, in Murano. Why not use uh, plain Python language? It's uh, you know, pretty difficult uh, picture now. Got it. May maybe you can clarify? Yeah, sure. So why Morana uh, started uh, using the own language, DSL, and went uh, on DSL comparing to using already existing uh, Python, Lua, anything which can be embedded, actually. So uh, to make Python embeddable and secure, to in, in order to be able to run uh, on controller nodes, you need to be Google with the app engine or have a team of 100 people. So we didn't have that. So we went with our own, own language, which is sandboxed, but built on top of Python. So Murana PL doesn't have compiler, doesn't have translator, doesn't have anything. It is almost direct mapping to Python. So actually, you, when you're writing for cycle, you're writing for cycle on Python. But uh, at the same time, you're only able to use so much which is exposed in Murana PL and YAML. Mm -hmm. So we gave sandboxed language to the users uh, instead of uh, use, giving ability to use anything and run unsecurely on cloud. As you remember, any of our users, application developers, can develop their own piece of code and upload it to the catalog, which some other user will execute on controller node in order to deploy application. So you have no, like, 
you need to either 100% trust to this code and run it super securely, or use something else which will guarantee security for your code. That's why we invented uh, our YAML language. Mm -hmm. At that time, 2000, uh, we wanna start in 2012. In 2013, we changed the language from XML to YAML. Uh, there was not so much uh, container stuff, so probably now we, will, we would consider running some existing Python language in some container, spawn container, run something there and destroy it. But at that time, we didn't have this choice. So, okay. I have Thank I you. answered your question? Yeah. Sure. You mentioned about uh, G VN generic VNFM. Yeah. Will that satisfy the requirements of a vendor specific VNFM? Can I deploy a G VNFM and take care of the majority of my VNFM needs? Now, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, so this is about uh, generic VNFM. Will it satisfy the need? Because some of the vendors come with their own VNFM manager. And if we have to go with a generic VNFM, how feasible it is? In the model, I'm a software engineer at Nokia. Okay. So, uh, First of all, it will have to be implemented in a language that the engine knows how to work with. It should be over a specific cloud that fits it. And secondly, uh, a, VNF, a specific VNFM is also an application. We are never talking on a hardware. So even a specific VNFM can be deployed as part of the application if there is a specific monitor needs you need to fulfill. Are you talking about something that needs to run? Specific VNFM with a generic VNFM. If instead of deploying specific VNFMs, can I have one single generic VNFM? Uh, quick answer. Uh, yes, and Morana is targeting this uh, market. We would like to be generic VNFM. But for now, everyone talking about Tosca uh, as gener as orchestrator, as a manager, and so far we're going. Can you expand a bit on what you called a network service in your last slide, I believe it was, and you chose Tosca for that versus for a VNF? You chose uh, Hot. What's the difference, uh, network service versus VNF? And the other question was, how does Tacker fit in with, um, or Cloudify fit in with, uh, with uh, your cloud band product? Okay, so first of all, the difference between a VNFM and a NFVO is that a VNFM is a generic manager for a specific VNF. It knows how to manage, it knows how to deploy, it how to scale, to heal everything around the life cycle. On the other end, NFVO allows you to take on a higher level the, the VNFs and connect them together. But it doesn't do all the dirty work itself. What it does is it uh, talks using a RESTful API. It talks to, with the VNFM and requests it, please deploy a VNF with such and such details. For instance, uh, with uh, name X and vendor Y. And then the VNFM does it. He knows how to deal with it. So right now, uh, Docker and Cloudify aren't part of the solution offered in CloudVend. But everything that we are, we are doing, we are trying to do it as uh, generically as possible. So if we will need to integrate with other solution, we are open to that. I believe Tacker is a VNFM and a catalog as well, right? It's That's the, their charter. It's the op OpenStack project, Tacker, right? Right. OK. Thanks. OK. Any more questions? Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be here another few minutes, 5.10. So if you have more questions, come to us. We'll be happy to answer. Thank you, guys.